What about a colleague from Gaku? Are you there? Yeah, yes, we are, we are here. Hello. Gaku, you are there, Elvis? Yeah. Hello? We are here. Yes. So we can start then. Huh? So we previously had an introduction, learn on uh, bacteria, structure, uh, growth, uh, growth requirements, and uh, so on. Today's lecture, we cover most of uh, the intro required for bacteriology. I think we have gone all through this. So I think this was uh, the last uh, slide for uh, for who is uh, his class, and we will continue from there. These were uh, environmental factors that influence uh, the growth of bacteria, including temperature, atmosphere contents, including oxygen availability, CO2, pH, and water availability. So when all conditions are well fulfilled, then you can grow your culture, your bacteria in, uh, in laboratory, in petri dish. And uh, normally you start with a mixture population where you have uh, many uh, different colonies that is uh, different bacteria. Then uh, you can, from a plate, uh, inoculate one colony only uh, to the other plate, a new plate, and that is called pure culture. That is normally from a single colony. Mm, population of organism descending from one organism, eh, from one colony. By principle, each of the colony, like this one, is just from one bacteria. As we said, very few can be uh, grown in the lab, and colony or clone began with a single bacterium on, uh, on the medium. So in the lab, mostly uh, the organisms are grown in uh, batch culture. That means you don't uh, remove waste and you don't include new material. So the growth will be like limited eh? with uh, a amount of nutrients, with uh, waste accumulating, then we have the the curve that we have studied. We have uh, learned uh, last the growth curve, the typical growth curve, where you have uh, four phase, lag phase, exponential phase, stationary phase, and this phase. So with this uh, bad culture, you only have that uh, trend, that that pattern of growth and uh, it is limited by these two factors, the nutrient and accumulation of uh, waste product in the medium. So uh, cult cultivating bacteria in the lab, uh, you need uh, to provide a source of nutrient. Eh? We have seen that uh, you have to fulfill all nutritional requirements of a given bacteria. So for some bacteria you need complex media where you have uh, all nutrients and sometimes you don't know most of many of the components of your media. And uh, this is one of the, 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 the complex media like uh, blood agar, which is mostly nutrient agar on which uh, you add, they add a, a blood uh, to, to enrich the medium. So blood is complex, it has a lot of uh, uh, nutrients or factors that some bacteria may require. And you don't know which uh, component is required by what bacteria in this case of a complex medium. 
And uh, sometimes you have to use a selective media. And a selective media is the media that you use to really grow what you want. For example, if you take uh, some specimen uh, uh, with, with uh, many uh, normal flora like uh, feces, you really have to select what you want. Otherwise, there will be overgrowth of uh, normal flora and you will miss your pathogen. So that is why you have to use a, a, a media that grow specific uh, bacteria and inhibit others. For example, is this uh, Maconke aga, which uh, grow only gram negative roots, but inhibit other kind of uh, bacteria in there. Then uh, we have also differential media, and this differential media is mostly used uh, by by lab to really differentiate, to initiate the identification of bacteria. And uh, as you can see here, we have uh, manito salt agar on which there is two different type of uh, colonies. Some are yellow, some others look pink. And uh, this in yellow means the, the, the fermentation of manito changed the indicator to turn yellow. And this fermentation is uh, related to the metabolism of the bacteria that is in here. Yeah? We see that uh, Staphylococcus aureus is really characteristic, correct, or uh, most of the stuff, we have this kind of uh, fermenting manito. While Streptococcus, we not have this uh, manito fermentation. Mm? So it includes uh, ingredients such as chemicals and indicator that produce observable uh, differences between species of bacteria. So based on pH, you can see that uh, the indicator here have changed and this means the, the, the pathogen or the bacteria have used the component uh, in this media, which is uh, monitor. So, to grow bacteria, as we said, again, you have to create appropriate environmental conditions. And this includes atmospheric pressure, temperature, oxygen availability. So in lab, in lab, uh, we use uh, uh, anaerobic jar to, to create uh, the, 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 the environmental, the anaerobic environmental. We use uh, incubators eh, to set the optimal temperature, and we use sometimes a candle jar. If you can see inside this bottle, there is a, a candle that really uh, reduce oxygen, but also increase a bit the concentration of CO2 eh, to some organism that we really need a high amount of CO2 to grow uh, nicely in uh, in, in, in media. So all these are used to create uh, better environmental conditions. So once you have your culture, once you have your colony on the plate, you will have to identify the bacteria. And uh, you will have to say this is uh, genus and species. And to do that, you have to really follow a systematic way, uh, starting with more generic uh, identification criteria to more specific identification criteria for each bacteria. So identification of uh, bacteria in uh, diagnostic lab, there is um, like a set of uh, six uh, uh, characteristics uh, or phenotypic characteristics, including microscopy appearance, growth requirement, colonial morphology, hemolysis pattern on blood uh, agar, biochemical tests that we see that uh, are many, and the antimicrobial susceptibility pattern. So with microscopy, you can be able to already uh, see the difference between bacteria. As uh, we previously seen, 
with microscopy, you are able to see the size, you are able to see the shape, and you are able to see the arrangement. So with the arrangement, shape, and size, you already have idea of the organism. But definite, definitive uh, identification will require some more steps because at this level, you are still having many uh, genus, many uh, species with same with same morphology. So you can use gram stain to differentiate gram positive, which are uh, the blue uh, purple here the, in the chain, or uh, in pink, uh, the, the gram negative. Uh. With gram stain, you are able to really differentiate these two categories. You can also use oramine stain, um, mostly on uh, mycobacterium. We use oramine and we differentiate the bright yellow organism, uh, which are uh, acid fast. You, you will learn uh, why are they acid fast and uh, how do this work to, to have this kind of stain while the background is dark. So it's uh, typical for mycobacteria to find the bacilli like this which are acid fast, and uh, by staining, you can already have an idea that it is uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, also depending on the specimen. If the specimen can really uh, require staining with oramine, such as uh, sputum and so on, you can already have an idea. Zil nascent stain is also acid fast, where you see the organism in, in red, Typical for mycobacteria also. You can see that uh, with mycobacteria, you can see uh, uh, in red, acid fast, while the background is uh, blue, uh, blue as uh, it takes the last color, the count stain solution, which is uh, methylene blue. So with microscopy, you are already at one point of knowing the, the 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 bacteria, but you are still far from uh, really uh, uh, saying this is mycobacterium tuberculosis or this is Staphylococcus aureus or this is uh, E. coli. So you are still far, but you already have an idea what kind of uh, uh, pathogen you are expecting from your specimen. Please interrupt me when you have question. Eh? Please. Hello. Are you following? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. You follow? Yes. Yes. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Yes. Clear. Okay. Then please, uh, once you have question. Uh, turn on your mic and uh, interrupt me eh? at any time. Eh? Yes, I'm gonna do it. The second uh, criteria, phenotypic criteria, is the growth requirement. Some bacteria we need uh, in atmosphere with uh, enriched uh, CO2, and those are called capnophilic. Huh? So you, you need to increase the CO2 uh, in your environment, and that is mostly achieved by using a candle jar. You can uh, use the candle to really uh, reduce the ox oxygen in the environment, but uh, CO2 uh, retained uh, increase, eh? the percentage increase. Eh? And temperature, uh, most, as we what, said, most clinically are mesophilic. Y yes, please. Question. Uh, I wonder how the, that, that, uh, that material candle jar is made. Because I have seen that the candle is inside the bottle and then the bottle is, is closed. And I wonder where oxygen to cause this burning of candle, where it comes from. who can answer the question. So you wonder, how does uh, this candle increase uh, the CO2?
Anyone ready to answer the question? So, uh, indeed, as you, you say, eh? so when you have this, uh, you have this jar and you place the, the candle inside, you close your jar and uh, the candle is uh, on. Eh? So this candle, we, when uh, the fire, the fire use oxygen. I think you know that. By reducing oxygen, yes. by reducing oxygen, the proportion of the air, you are uh, basically increasing some other gases eh, in the air, including CO2. Do, do you follow? Yeah. So if I have uh, yeah. a, a, a fire here within, and it is closed, eh, so that the oxygen is not getting in particularly, so the oxygen being used for with hello can you can you please uh, switch off your mic or so the oxygen being used we uh, uh, be reduced and the proportion of the other gas including c2 we are cleared in this photo. Did, did it uh, work well? Is it okay? So by reducing oxygen, yeah, it's okay. you are increasing other gas, eh? including uh, CO2. And that is how the candle jar is really important in those conditions. And you will find that it is uh, often used. Eh? Sometimes there is a, there is a, a incubators, a dedicated incubators where you can set uh, your uh, environment so to to be uh, regulated. But in most of the lab, uh, the incubator is quite expensive. They use this uh, approach, the candle approach. Then another question. Then you... Question? Yes. Yes, thank you. Any other question? No? Question, let's go. Yes, go ahead. Then how comes that that candle will continue lightning when there is no oxygen? No, no, no. There? Well, okay. When the oxygen is reduced, the candle will be off. Huh? Just a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. So once you incubate, because it is closed, the candle will automatically uh, get off huh? once uh, the oxygen is uh, mostly up to, to almost uh, finished eh? within the jar. The candle will be will go off. By itself, huh? you can even do that experience by yourself. Huh? If you take a bottle, you put your candle and you light, uh, you close. It can uh, it can be on for uh, a few minutes, but it will get off by itself. Thank you. Because the oxygen is uh, is no longer <laughs> uh, sufficient. Is that okay? Like it's okay. Okay, so the temperature uh, is uh, mostly 30 to 40 degrees, that is uh, mesophilic. And nutrition, some grow readily on ordinary nutrient media, as we said. Some others require specific uh, nutrition, like this hemophilus influenza. We never grow when it doesn't have factor 10 and factor 5. Factor 10, that is hemin, and uh, factor 5 is uh, NAD. So without these two factors, hemophilus influenza will never grow. And uh, to make it uh, or to grow this organism, you have to supply these two factors. And some other bacteria will grow on uh, basic medium. So by 
considering gross requirement, you are already having a, a knowledge on which organism you have. So colonial morphology. So colonial morphology is another important uh, criteria, phenotypic criteria that uh, helps uh, to identify bacteria. And colonial morphology is uh, is typical for each uh, species, for each species, uh, as long as the specific media is uh, is uh, is used in the co controlled condition, the, the bacteria we have, uh, their size, um, the, the species, a specific species we have, it's de de defined size, shape, texture, and color. So the colony, we have always the same, uh, around the same size, same shape, same texture, or color. Mm? The colony may be flat or raised, Mm, that is shaped, smooth or irregular, and sometimes pigmented. Eh? So they, they can have pigment that shows uh, typical uh, organism, like Pseudomonas uh, is uh, green or blue, while Ceratia, Marcescens, is, uh, is pink. So by producing this kind of pigment, you can already have uh, an idea on the, the pathogen. Similarly, the colony size, shape, texture, with uh, experienced laboratory technician already uh, knows uh, this is uh, likely to be this. This is likely to be this. But you don't have yet the, 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 the final identification. By combining microscopy, microscopy, uh, gross requirement, colonial morphology, you are at certain level of uh, identification, but not complete. Another criteria which is important is hemolysis, as, uh, as we said. Some uh, bacteria produce hemolysis, uh, which are enzymes that destroy red blood cells. And uh, we have typical uh, 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 image or uh, Characteristic morphological characteristics. So we have uh, three uh, categories. Some are beta hemolytic, that is uh, those with a clear zone of complete hemolysis around the colony. If you can see on this blood agar, do you see? We have beta, and the surrounding of this colony in B, in beta, that is the colony. It was just uh, and uh, you can see the clear surrounding area uh, with, uh, yeah, that is complete hemolysis. While uh, alpha hemolytic, uh, they are green mm, zone of incomplete hemolysis. Mm, the, the, the green zone, not, not uh, complete hemolysis. And some other bacteria like uh, this in gamma are non-hemolytic. Eh? And these features are mostly used for streptococci. We see that in uh, our systematic uh, uh, bacteriology. When we do identification of streptococci, we really uh, have this criteria as one of the, the identification uh, feature of some uh, streptococci species. So biochemical test. So uh, there is a set of biochemical tests that that are mostly used for identification of bacteria. Uh, one is called catalase test. So this is uh, to see whether the pathogen, the bacteria, can produce this enzyme, catalase enzyme. But, uh, can you please switch your mic? Please switch your microphone. So, catalase test is uh, a test 
that assess the ability of bacteria to produce this enzyme, an enzyme called catalase. And catalase uh, is an enzyme that allows bacteria to hydrolyze the, the oxygenated water into water and oxygen. So the slide catalase can just be done uh, by by adding a drop of uh, of uh, oxygenated water to a colony and just mix. When you see bubble present, that means the enzyme is just uh, uh, catalyzing the reaction or uh, hydrolyzing the the oxygenated water into water and oxygen. And if uh, the bubble are present, then the reaction is positive, means the bacteria is producing is producing uh, catalase. Mm? Catalase negative, there is nothing. You can see the colony can be uh, can be put here. And this is a direct uh, reaction. Eh? You don't wait. You just do it, and you see the positive or negative reaction. Coagulase test is also uh, the ability of bacteria to produce coagulase enzyme. And uh, coagulase enzyme uh, normally uh, can change fibrinogen from plasma to fibrin, eh? visible clot, and that is uh, one of uh, of uh, virulence factor that we see. Changing this is uh, already bad. Eh? If you have uh, a pathogen that can do that, it it can then produce some effect. So coagulase, you can do uh, by adding uh, a drop of. Uh, of plasma on your slide mm, and see whether the 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 the, the clot can be just uh, formed in in your your on your slide or sometimes in your tube so there is a uh, possible to visualize that on the tube so these two enzymes are mostly used to differentiate uh, staphylococcus from uh, streptococcus catalase Coagulase is mostly to differentiate Staphylococcus species. We see all those. So another uh, biochemical test is uh, DINAS test, which is also testing uh, the ability of uh, of uh, an organism to produce this free, uh, uh, free uh, dinase uh, or uh, this enzyme. And the uh, positive reaction is uh, just this kind of surrounded with a clear, mm, after applying hydrochloric acid uh, on the plate, you can see a visible clear uh, surrounding on uh, on your colony and this is a, a positive reaction while nothing change here is uh, dark that is a negative reaction we see that it is also used for staphylococcus mm -hmm. to differentiate staphylococcus aureus from other staphylococcus species so optoshin test is uh, we have a disc some uh, like uh, streptococcus uh, pneumonia are really sensitive to this disc while other streptococcus are resistant. So you can be able to identify streptococci pneumonia by using this disc, which destroy, mm, cause the lysis of uh, several of uh, this uh, pathogen while it doesn't for other uh, streptococci. So you can be able to say this is uh, streptococcus pneumonia, while uh, others uh, cannot be uh, destroyed by this uh, disc. So it is more specific to this pathogen. We have 
is clean, uh, it's called bile at S clean test, mm, which is mostly used for anterococci, mm, are able to hydrolyze S clean to S clean tin and glucose in presence of uh, bile mm, and uh, give the black component eh, complex. Mm. So uh, this is mostly used for anterococci. Uh, we see uh, the species of anterococci. Some are uh, are esquiline or bile esquiline uh, positive. Some others are negative. And this is a feature that can help to identify the species of anterococci. So there is also endol test, and endol test test the ability of organism to produce endol from tryptophan, eh? amino acid. Mm -hmm. And this color is, uh, is observed when uh, the endol is positive, as endol can react with uh, some aldehyde to produce this, uh, this specific color on, uh, on your in, in, inside your tube. When you add, uh, there is a reagent called COVAX, that you can add and uh, turn your reaction, your ring in, uh, in that uh, nice uh, red color. While the negative will not show the red color as no endol is inside there. So we have other biochemical tests like um, ortonit Orto nitrophenyl uh, galactosid, uh, the, the enzyme test, which also allow bacteria to to use uh, to use galactose, eh? and uh, with this enzyme, some uh, may do have this enzyme, and we be able to ferment uh, to ferment. Uh, Lactose uh, to galactose and the uh, ortho nitrophenol, uh, which is a yellow component. Eh? So you can differentiate two organisms, one which are negative here and one which is positive here. Some bacteria can produce ureas, it is also an enzyme, and you can differentiate these two uh, bacteria by using uh, a media, a media uh, that is rich in urea, and uh, the urea, when the organism has this enzyme, we hydrolyze urea into ammonia and the carbon dioxide. Eh? And this is a media uh, which have been discovered by this uh, person, eh? Chris, Chris Jensen. That is how they call the media. So, another uh, biochemical reaction that is done is uh, oxidase, the ability of bacteria to produce uh, oxidase. And it, it can also be uh, done by using a disc. Yeah? A disc, if the, the reaction is positive, you can see the deep purple color mm, within 10 seconds mm, and uh, that is because of uh, uh, the cytochrome oxidase enzyme oxidize the reagent eh, to form endophenol blue mm. so uh, by this reaction you can differentiate oxidase positive microorganism from oxidase negative microorganism so, quickly, with this uh, generic biochemical test, combined with a gram stain uh, or uh, the microscopy feature, combined with gross requirement, combined with colony morphology, you can already be able to differentiate most of the pathogenic species. Mm? So, you may require some additional uh, species speciation criteria, but with uh, only uh, this criteria, you are far away to the identification of uh, most pathogen, genera, and species. 
So how do they uh, do this? They combine criteria. So bacteria with these uh, characteristics, oxidase positive, uh, uh, ureas test positive, ONPGs, and uh, so for some set of uh, bacteria classification, you can use some set of uh, criteria to identify. And you have the manual or the protocol in the lab that you follow in the identification of each bacteria. So if you have uh, a gram state, you have there is an instruction on how you go with identification. So you start with the catalase, coagulase, depending on what catalase gives you, and after coagulase, you are at one level of identified staff orange. So uh, with uh, combining all these criteria, you can be able to set the criteria in each pathogen. Can you switch off uh, mic, please? Any question on uh, identification of bacteria? So this is more generic. For each bacteria, we uh, discuss its, uh, its way of identification. How do we identify this pathogen in the lab? Any question? So if no question, we can proceed with the post-microbial relationship or uh, relations, eh? uh, the interaction between hosts and uh, microbes, eh? in our case, bacteria. What is uh, the interaction? How does it work? How does bacteria cause disease? Mm? What is the, the pathway of causing disease? What are uh, really the, the cause of uh, the observed, observed design symptoms. So, relationship between normal flora and host mm, is always uh, uh, called symbiosis. Eh? So, you are, you are in a relationship, and uh, this relationship may be categorized as commensalism. When one organism benefits and the other is unaffected, yeah? nothing happened to other. It doesn't benefit, but it, 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 it is not harmed. Yeah? It doesn't have any pro problem. Mutualism, when both organisms benefit from each other. And this is the most uh, yes, relationship between flora and the uh, host. A question? A question? So if no question, so we have the three, but uh, in most cases, uh, normal flora are uh, in relationship in symbiosis by mutualism. Eh? So both organisms benefit because normal flora give some protection to the to the to the host and the host also uh, provides uh, some nutrient to this uh, normal flora so they are in this kind of uh, uh, mutualism and uh, parasitism that is when one organism benefits at the expense of the other and this is most of the uh, pathogen, eh? relationship with pathogen. So they benefit eh? and uh, the, the, the host uh, suffer, so, or the host. Uh, so in most of cases, our normal flora are in mutualism, uh, but sometimes in commercialism. Eh? They are not adding anything, but they don't also harm you. They are with you. So 
we have uh, a wide range of uh, normal flora in uh, different parts of our body, in nose, in throat, in, in, throat, in uh, large intestine, mass, skin, vagina, and urethra. So they are uh, really uh, with us and they have some role in there. Hmm? We see that uh, the normal flora are important to influence the anatomy, physiology, even susceptible to pathogen. Eh? Hmm? So sometimes if you miss uh, some uh, normal flora, then the pathogen can quickly invade or cause problem. So in nose, we have some species of uh, Staphylococcus, but also con bacterium species. So these are the most important, but not limited to only this. Eh? We have a wide range of uh, microorganisms in there. So you can read all those are uh, normal flora. Mm? Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> even the pathogen are in there, but in this specific area, when the, the host doesn't have any problem, immune, uh, immune system is, uh, is, is okay, then it will not cause any problem. But when there is a immune uh, suppression, then even the normal flora can cause problem. If you see here, we have hemophilus, we have Neisseria, and they are just there as normal flora. We have diverse species of Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, even Staphylococcus aureus which is a, a known uh, a pathogen. But in this context, it's not pathogenic because it is in, uh, in a residence where it is in equilibrium with the immune response of the host. So they don't cause any problem. And uh, the normal flora, as I said, the, the normal flora influence the anatomy, physiology, even susceptibility to pathogen, eh? even morbidity to the host. So sometimes these uh, normal flora are just there to really uh, make this site uh, more, uh, more fit for their biological or physiological uh, needs. And uh, sometimes there are barriers eh, to pathogen. Eh? If they are removed, then the pathogen can quickly invade, can quickly uh, gain uh, a site. This is a, a bit uh, an example. Normal flora may aid the host in several ways. Mm? In digestion of food, mm? developing mucosa immunity, so the immunity uh, is like uh, this uh, normal flora have some antigen mm, that are similar to the pathogen antigen. And by cross immunity, then these uh, mucosa are already having this protection to the pathogen, yet the stimulation is from normal flora. Mm. So they protect the host from colonization with uh, uh, patho pathogenic ba bacteria. Uh, this is an example. Hmm? With normal flora, you need up to uh, one million eh, pathogenic microbes to, to initiate uh, gastrointestinal infection. Yet, without or with reduced flora, hmm, after, for example, streptomycin treatment of the mouse, eh, if you treat uh, the mouse with streptomycin, this streptomycin will kill uh, the normal flora, We reduce the normal flora um, significantly, and only 10 uh, pathogenic microbes can already initiate the infection. You can see how the normal flora are such very important in protecting the gastrointestinal tract from uh, being uh, infected. Otherwise, we always uh, ingest uh, pathogen, but they don't cause any problem. Why? Because you need such huge amounts or huge number 
to cause uh, problem. Otherwise, the rest can be easily neutralized. So how does uh, normal flora uh, protect uh, our body or uh, protect the, the mucous membrane or the mucosa cell? We have uh, two sides. We have protect, protected uh, host and you have a host which is or uh, affected host eh, or with disease. In here, we have uh, pathogen that did not manage to grow. Why did, did they uh, or uh, when they are not able to grow? One is that uh, there is some uh, immune stimulation from, from this uh, mucosa or uh, the host uh, stimulated by the, the antigen from, uh, from flora, normal flora, some waste product formation by normal flora, as there are many, they produce uh, uh, sufficient waste mm, uh, to, to inhibit the growth of pathogen. Mm, and uh, this layer formation, they protect the mucosa cell by making this kind of layer, by growing massively on the mucosa, they protect uh, the adherence of this uh, pathogen. While in disease condition, let's say when there is large, very large inoculum, inoculum is, a, is a, an estimate number of bacteria, as we say, it's a million or above. So when there is antimicrobial drug uh, treatment to the host, it will kill normal flora and uh, make the host uh, more susceptible. Mm -hmm. Some host factors, mm, reduced uh, peristasis, immune suppression, if there is immune suppression, or physical destruction of this uh, mucosa cell or the, 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 your uh, protective layer of normal flora. So this will allow the pathogen to stick on the mucosa cell membrane and grow in large number and initiate the infection. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, then uh, the origin of uh, disease, susceptibility of some, some hosts, some others not. So the normal flora are very important to compete with the pathogen, thus protect the host hmm, by these three ways. Eh? Is this clear? I assume. Please interrupt when you have questions. So, but sometimes uh, normal flora can act as an opportunistic pathogen. Eh? And opportun opportunistic means they don't have this uh, ability of being pathogen by their nature, but given uh, the the ground, eh, the host, then they can produce some uh, disease because of uh, reduced immunity, host susceptibility, al al alterate uh, because of A1 immune suppression, like uh, uh, HIV AIDS, radiation, mm, chemotherapy, eh? or uh, sometimes the injury of the mucous membrane, perforated uh, mucous membrane, or uh, rheumatic heart disease, all causes of immune suppression or uh, decrease in immunity, we make the, 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 the host to be more susceptible. And this uh, flora, normal flora, we definitely cause a problem. We definitely initiate disease, and those are called opportunistic pathogens. So we have them, we are with them, and uh, when the ground or uh, the, the host 
So they live in equilibrium with the immune system. When the immune system then is down, then they grow, they overgrow and cause problems. Can you speak to the, the microphone? Can you switch? Thank you. So, uh, site of human body that the normal flora microbe can colonize. So, in the respiratory tract and the head, we have the out ear, the ear, the mouth, or pharynx, nasopharynx. But the sinuses, middle ear, brain, lower respiratory tract are always sterile. There is no microbe in there lungs, bronchi, trachea, there, there, there is no, there should no uh, be micro. If they are there, then it is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Gastrointestinal tract, uh, most are uh, always full of uh, micro. Genitourinary system mm -hmm. also have uh, a large number of uh, normal flora. Mm, except bladder, cervix, uterus, and the skin. Eh? Our skin is uh, really the site of uh, diverse normal flora. So the pathogen, how, how does uh, the, 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 the bacterial pathogen uh, cause disease? Mm? Infection, uh, that means growth and multiplication of a microbe in or on Question, the body sir. or without the production. Question. So when we say infection, we haven't yet... Uh, yes, please. I have a question. Yes, I can hear. Go ahead. Yeah, you said that the, the antibiotics, when you give them for... For some time, they are going to kill the normal flora. Yes. But I'm asking if if you give the antibiotics, they are specific to to a certain bacteria. How comes that they are going to kill the the normal flora? Yeah, that is very important. Eh? So some antibiotics have a wide uh, spectrum. So they 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 work on large. Uh, so they can affect different uh, kind of bacteria. Do you follow? Some antibiotics can limit their action on a given uh, specific bacteria. Some others are called wide spectrum antibiotics. And those wide spectrum antibiotics, we not only kill the pathogen, we also really affect the normal flora, the diversity of normal flora. We also affect or kill the normal flora or reduce uh, significantly the normal flora. Do you follow? Depending on yes, the, the antibiotics you, you give the patient, they can affect uh, some uh, bacteria, but some others can affect a wide range of uh, bacteria, including normal flora. And those are not good. And sometimes a patient uh, or antibiotics are required to be taken longer. Like, uh, can you switch the microphone? Can you see the microphone, please? Can you see the mic?
Thank you, Eric. It is very important that we really uh, try to be uh, well organized eh? to limit uh, the, 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 the bad sounds and the disturbance to colleagues. Please don't uh, switch on the microphone always. Or uh, just ask question, but turn it off. Is it clear? about the white uh, spectrum antibiotics and sometimes use uh, antibiotics uh, longer. So when uh, it is uh, prescribed, but with short, uh, the, 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 the normal flora can restore quickly. Even if they are affected, they can grow quickly and recover or uh, uh, be able to, to, to have the same number in a short time. But when the antibiotics is taken too long or, or uh, longer, depending on, on uh, disease being treated, eh? the, the, the problem being solved. So the patient we have like uh, uh, longer exposure to antibiotics, the normal flora we die and we not have uh, time to restore and uh, we be a big problem for the patient. Was that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So the infection uh, is uh, when the microbe is in or on the body, but also growing or uh, multiplying in the body. Mm? So, or on the body. They may cause disease or not causing disease, but they are there and they are able to grow they are growing. That is called infection. So, uh, so the capacity of bacterium to cause disease eh, is called pathogenicity. So some bacteria have higher uh, capacity to cause disease and some others have uh, relatively lower mm? or some others have no uh, capacity to cause disease including the normal flora and uh, the measure of pathogenicity is called virulence eh? so we say some uh, uh, some strain some bacteria are more virulent than others. And in, with virulence, we are compi co co comparing uh, uh, same species. Mm -hmm. uh, virulence is uh, about species you are, you, are, you are talking. Some species, uh, same species, but uh, strains. You, by comparing different strains of the same species, you can be able to say this uh, strain is virulent than the other. So the virulence is uh, the measure of pathogenicity and can be compared between strains of the same species of bacteria. So pathogenesis refer both to the mechanism of infection and to the mechanism by which disease develops. How does the infection take place? And how does the infection or the, the bacteria, how does it going to really uh, produce disease? That is pathogenesis. So these are important, uh, important terminology. So infection, pathogenicity, virulence, and pathogenesis. I, I hope you already had this even before. In microbiology one or... Uh, So host susceptibility, that means uh, all hosts are not same. Huh? So some hosts are more um, susceptible. Some others are quite resistant to some uh, specific disease or some specific uh, pathogen. So susceptibility to bacterial infection, host defense, 
versus uh, bacterial virulence. So this depends on the host and uh, its defense. Some hosts may have this uh, higher uh, ability to, to, to fight against uh, the bacteria. Some others uh, reduced ability and uh, thus define the susceptibility to the pathogen. So there is some host defense, there is barriers such as skin, uh, mucus, mm, and that is the first, uh, first line barrier. Mm. In it, uh, innate immunity, that is complement, macrophage, cytokine, mm, and that is the early stage uh, barrier. So the, the first barrier is uh, just the, 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 the skin mucus. The second is uh, innate uh, or natural natural immunity. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when uh, the two barriers are uh, really uh, defeated, then there is another uh, arm of defense, which is adaptive immunity. And this is uh, specific to the pathogen, mm -hmm. pathogen antigen. And here you will see B cell, which uh, lead to antibody production and T cell. And this comes at later stage. So when uh, the first line R stage are defeated, then the later stage, which is adaptive immunity, comes in. So host defense can be compromised by destructing barrier or defective immune response. So by destroying the, the barrier, let's have uh, an example of injury on skin, on mucous membrane, then you already have a problem with your initial barrier. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, two categories of pathogen. There is strict pathogen, and these have uh, more virulent, virulent and can cause disease even in normal hosts, in normal person. And uh, those are called uh, pathogen eh? or uh, bacteria. And there is some others which are opportunistic pathogen. And these are part of uh, normal flora and can cause disease only when, um, when the host uh, immunity is impaired eh? or physiology is impaired. And this uh, led to the, to the disease because the impaired immunities or the pathogen have that even in normal host, normal defense, normal host, but the pathogen is able to cause disease. Mm? They have strong virulence factors or they have the factors that really uh, help this pathogen to cause disease. And this is, uh, this is uh, the strict pathogen. Eh? The strict pathogen does not require some uh, impaired uh, physiology or they will just cause disease whenever they are there, given that the, the host is susceptible. Any question? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please, if a uh, question, I see some hands. Is there any question? Yes. Uh, yes. I want to ask you, um, if possible, you, you may clarify about uh, this this diagram. I don't understand it well. Yeah, we have three. Uh, do you see my pointer of the mouse? No, I can't see. Do you now see my pointer? Yes, I. It's red. Do you see? So here, yes, I with the first, yeah, with the first uh, category, 
we have a, a pathogenic uh, or a strict pathogen. Even if the host have no more defense, even if the first line, which is skin and mucus, are intact, and also a natural immunity, the complement, uh, phagocyte, and so on, are okay. Also, adaptive immunity is okay. The, the pathogen will just cause disease because this pathogen have strong virulence factors. They have those uh, factors that allow it to cause disease. And this is called strict pathogen. Is that clear? This is the first. Uh, and some other bacteria, yes. we only cause problem when the, the, the body is impaired eh? or the immune system that we described, either the barrier, first line barrier, or the natural immunity or the adaptive is uh, impaired. Eh? When the, it is impaired and the pathogen causes disease or uh, the, 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 the normal flora causes the disease because of this impairment, that is, uh, that is opportunistic pathogen. It means it will only cause disease when there is this condition. Otherwise, it can't cause disease. Do you follow? It can only live with you. There is nothing, nothing problem. But with weakened hmm, defense, then they cause problem. And those are opportunistic pathogen. Strict pathogen does not need any condition here to the host. It will cause disease to the normal host as well as host with impaired uh, immunity, impaired uh, defense, hmm? impaired physiology. Impaired physiology means injury, means uh, all those that uh, change the normal physiology of the, 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 the site. Is that okay? Then we have here okay. a, balan a balanced, uh, uh, that is, uh, when uh, you have potential pathogen, there is virulence factor, but they are in balanced healthy states. So they live together without any problem. In this case, either you have uh, a problem with physiologic state to, to, to immediately uh, cause this, or this equilibrium remain there and you, are, you don't have any problem. You have your defense, the pathogen is there, but it doesn't cause any harm. So that is why some people can just be carrier, carrier of, uh, of a pathogen. They don't get sick, but they have this pathogen. Let's say Salmonera. susceptible <laughs> Salmonera, Muri gats zabo, itabatezi kibazo. Abo banure bazifite, muri gat nizibatere kibazo, babari karia, nibo bagenda bazikwira kwiza, zikagenda zitera, abandi, bari susceptible, ibibazo. Do you follow? Some pathogen lives with people. And let's say also the case of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Some people, we have the infection. We stay uh, with the infection, but they will never develop disease. Some other people, we have the infection, but automatically start uh, having the disease. Some other people, some other we, people have the we have the infection until the immune system is weakened to have the, the disease. So mycobacterium tuberculosis is a, is a pathogen, is a strict pathogen, because it can cause disease to the normal host. But still, there is some host who, who we still have this uh, infection, but doesn't uh, get harmed by the pathogen. Hmm? They remain in equilibrium. And when this host uh, gets problem, then the pathogen can cause disease. So this kind of pathogen cannot be called opportunistic pathogen because they are able to cause problem to the normal host. 
bacteria nka mycobacterium tuberculosis ishobora guteza ikibazo umuntu muzima udafite any immunosuppression ntago wayi ntago wayita opportunistic pathogen nubwo hari abantu tuzi ko bashobora kuba bafite infection ariko ni nabenshi cyane ariko ntibarware kubera iyi equilibrium iri hagati ya pathogen na host abandi iyi equilibrium ya hungabana yeah, in case of uh, hiv aids or other uh, conditions za immunosuppression ya pathogen gaititer indwa either yes ya strict pathogen ariko ya in equilibrium status na host so we call those uh, strict pathogen because they can cause a uh, problem to the normal host is that clear yes clear <laughs> so transmission of an infection so by producing a symptomatic infection or mid disease rather than this of the host microorganisms that normally live in people enhance the possibility of transmission from one person to another kuvuga ngo bacteria zikora ku buryo host igira ability yo kutransmitting infection from one host to another otherwise eh uh, ihitirangire uh, kuko niba host host eh ipfuye then it will it will not uh, it will not be able to to transmit eh? so it should be there it should produce uh, symptoms hmm? some people or some person uh, animals are carrier and this is a symptomatic infection that can still uh, transmit uh, to another uh, person huh? in, in case of bacterial uh, pathogenesis it will not be transmitted until the affected patient is uh, is uh, symptomatic huh? so hari, hari now a population a population that can you please switch on switch off the mic can you please switch off the mic so now we have evidence that uh, mycobacterium can cause uh, can cause uh, can, can be transmitted even from uh, asymptomatic uh, patient eh? just the patients who are in subclinical stage can be able to transmit uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis now we are really um, uh, afraid of that condition whereas it was just uh, documented or it was known that before uh, transmitting this the patient have to cough huh? have to have these symptoms so carriers are asymptomatic but they transmit that is the case of uh, as i said salmonella mm-hmm. some people we have this in their their gut and we keep uh, uh, transmitting but they are not affected eh? so uh, and clinical symptoms of uh, disease often eh? promote transmission of the pathogen let's say uh, coughing coughing let's say even covid eh? covid not uh, bacteria but coughing from covid is uh, is promoted uh, by virus to transmit eh? it promote transmission same to to tb same to other respiratory tract infection so some others we cause diarrhea and the diarrhea we just disseminate the pathogen all over and the people we get infected by fecal oral routes because the pathogen is everywhere that is the case of cholera and so on so some symptoms promote the transmission of the pathogen so zoonosis that is an infection shared between animals and the human being 
in nosocomia are mostly hospital acquired infection which is differentiated from community acquired infection mm-hmm. and uh, as 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 you have here many bacteria are just transmitted on our hands eh? so uh, that is why washing hands is not only protective p- from covid but also from other many 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 microbes so uh, i think with this uh, habit with this behavior of not sharing hands we really promote uh, or uh, reduce transmission of uh, many bacteria or even uh, pathogen eh? so i think now we have uh, so you see by coughing uh, by food we eat by some uh, practices kissing Mm, arthropods so uh, injections all these can induce uh, transmission from one host to another host mm. so entry route uh, into the human body there is a diverse uh, entry route but there is also shedding route eh? so uh, sometimes different sometimes same eh? so like respiratory tract so the the bacteria enter by inhalation by mouth mm, to respiratory tract mm, and they shed by mouth uh, uh, nose mm, conjunctiva they can get in get out scratch injury they can just get in uh, into the body arthropod they are vectors uh, they can they can uh, inject by, but they can also uh, be infected or uh, carry the pathogen and this is the way they we transmit to another host so the 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 shedding most of uh, git gastrointestinal infection we just shed by anas by uh, feces and uh, roots uh, we have uh, ingestion inhalation trauma mm, arthropods bites sexual transmission all these are roots of getting in but also getting out of the pathogen from one host to another host clear is this clear Yes lecture. Yeah. Yes lecture. Okay. So with online we don't know whether you are following or uh, the connection was lost. <laughs> so some characteristic of pathogenic Excuse bacteria. Me, have... Yes. I didn't get what is shedding mean in terms of those infection. What? I didn't get what shedding mean. Means um, uh, exit, eh? so means uh, there is a there is infection, but there is also the way of this infection can exit from one host to another, or uh, excretion of the the the, the pathogen. Do, do you follow from host? outside of this host either from this host to environment either from this host to arthropod either from this host to another host so that is shedding yes yes so in do you follow all this in uh, black here are shedding uh, area of uh, the, the, the most bacteria and uh, in 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 uh, blue or green in that is uh, infection eh? that is uh, how the infection the root of infection to the to the host shedding means uh, excretion or uh, getting out of the the pathogen the bacteria from one yes, host I- 
it doesn't necessarily uh, mean going to another host. It can shed to the environment, then the other hosts get infected from the environment. It can shed from one host to another, like uh, when coughing, yeah? coughing, uh, when you are with people coughing, we immediately take the bacteria from one host to another host. Arthropod, we just shed, get the infection and we transmit this infection to another host when biting. Clear? So yeah. some characteristics of uh, pathogenic bacteria, the pathogenic bacteria have to be transmissible. Hmm? It have to be transmissible, it have to adhere to the host cell, it have to be able to invade hmm? the host cell and tissue to be attacked and uh, really cause problem to the host cell and tissue. It have to be able to evade hmm? or to escape the host immune system, it have to be able to really, uh, or having the mechanism on way it will protect itself from the host uh, immune response. As we have seen, there is uh, the first line barrier. We have the 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 R stage, which is uh, innate immunity. We have also adaptive immunity. So the real pathogen or the strict pathogen have to really be able to protect itself from the host immune system. Then uh, another important uh, factor characteristics is uh, toxigenicity. Some bacteria does not uh, produce toxin, but some others produce a wide range of toxin and enzymes that uh, cause specific uh, problem to the host. So uh, there is three way that bacteria cause disease. One is by destroying the tissue by themselves, by uh, by dividing, by uh, reproducing. They produce this byproduct, including enzyme, including this toxin, and they can really destroy the tissue hmm? or by just multiplying on the tissue they can destroy they can produce toxin and this toxin may be the cause of disease eh? toxigenicity we have invasiveness that is destroying by themselves toxigenicity means the toxin produced by the bacteria is the cause of disease will be uh, the source of uh, all symptom signs and stimulating uh, overwhelmingly host immune response. So these are the three pathways that bacteria produce disease or cause disease. One is by destroying the tissue. Second is by producing toxin or producing uh, toxic sub substances to the host. Third is by sti stimulating a uh, huge host immune response in such way the host immune response doesn't only limit to destroy uh, the pathogen, but also destroy its own components, its own tissue. So when this happens, we have uh, some uh, even, even uh, mycobacterium. Huh? Mycobacterium is a kind of uh, more uh, immunopathogenic uh, organism where the host immune response is the cause of uh, all the destruction that will take place. Not bacteria by itself, but stimulating the immune response in such way the immune response comes and destroys the tissue, although it destroyed the pathogen also, but uh, it will cause symptom by destroying its own components. So this is the same. So we have bacteria mediated pathogenesis. 
which is invasiveness, as we say, it, uh, by multiplying, they destroy the tissue. We have post mediated pathogenesis, that is mostly uh, the overwhelming uh, immune response to the bacteria, and uh, the immune response will then destroy the somatic cells, as, uh, as you see here. Host, uh, the bacteria stimulate uh, the host response, and this host response destroys the bacteria, but also the somatic tissue, and this is caused, uh, causing symptoms or disease. And there is also bacterial virus factor, including but, uh, toxins, including uh, enzymes that we see in different stages. So there is these three way or the pathogenesis way is bacteria mediated which is more by multiplying uh, the or producing uh, secreting toxin they can destroy this the cell somatic cell post mediated by stimulating the host immune response they can destroy the somatic cells or some uh, bacterial uh, virulence factors eh? causing disease. We see that uh, uh, we have even seen that uh, some of them produce coagulase. We see that these coagulase and some other enzymes can cause problems to the host. So some bacteria can acquire virulence gene. Mm -hmm. Here we have a, a virulent uh, E. coli. So that means it cannot cause disease. This is part of the normal flora. In guts, it doesn't have any problem. But this is uh, pathogenic or uh, virulent E. coli hmm? because it acquired or it has some factors. We have here virulent genes in their chromosome or on plasmid. We already know plasmid. We know the chromosome. It can have the various genes which are acquired, not originary with uh, this uh, bacteria. And this bacteria is able to share these genes, this plasmid, to this one and change this from a virulent to virulent. Huh? And uh, this can happen by three uh, phenomena that we already discussed conjugation, transduction, and transformation. Anyone can explain this terminology? The three terms, conjugation, transduction, and transformation? May I choose one? Emmanuel is I saying that. Can you be able to explain what are these uh, terms? Uh, <laughs> yes, can you explain conjugation, transition, and transformation? Excuse me, I am in a library where I can talk. You are? You are? You, are, you can't talk? You, you can't? Yes. But you know that or you don't? I know conjugation and the transformation only. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, what is transformation? Christy Bibian, can you tell us whether you know conjugation, transformation, transdiction? Christy Bibian. Yes. Yes. Can you explain, please? Uh, 
conjugation. Um, the we have conjugation, transdiction, and transformation. What does it mean? Yeah, conjugation. Uh, process by which a bacterium transfers its genetic material. Yeah, Vivian, uh -huh. we can't hear you. I only know conjugation. Mm -hmm. Good. Deborah? Uh, con Deborah, can you hear? Yes, lecture. Yes, can you uh, tell us? About this time, I don't know the meaning. Mm -hmm. Florian Shimimana. Florian Shimimana, can you? Can you explain? Please. I'm in the library where I can't say anything. Hello? No, you can't talk. So I, I, I think we explain this uh, this read terminology. We say conjugation is uh, the only sexual uh, way of exchanging this uh, um, genetic material bacteria and is only done with uh, sex pili, so they met and exchange the genetic material between bacteria to another. And this is done uh, between uh, strains of the same species. That is conjugation. Transdiction is by phage, is by, by uh, this is called phage, and uh, a virus that infects uh, bacteria. And sometimes this virus can import some uh, material from one bacteria to another. So it can import either this plasmid from this bacteria because this is infected from this bacteria infected with phage. When it is destroyed, this phage can infect this one, but also carry some uh, some genes that was in this virulent uh, E. coli, either a plasmid or this destroyed gene, and they can take this gene to this bacteria, and that is transdiction. So it means there is a phage intervention to transfer genetic material from one bacterium to another. Then transformation is... Uh, when this bacteria is destroyed in this environment, this bacteria can uptake some uh, fragment, DNA fragment from its environment. Because this is dead and uh, the material is uh, fragmented, the bacteria here can just, in the same environment, can just uh, uh, allow entry of uh, fragment of uh, genetic material from this bacteria to this. Hmm? There is no active uh, mechanism, but uh, only uh, the entry by permeasis and uh, allow the integration of some fragments, some genetic material from its environment to the cell. And these uh, three way are the most, uh, or they are the only way that a virulent strain can exchange genetic material to a virulent and change this uh, a virulent to virulent. 
ni kuvuga ngo iyo uh, ihaye i, i, kimwe mu bituma iba virulent iyi nayo ihinduka virulent so by 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 nature plasmids can just be taken from here environment of this bacteria or can be taken by exchange through safe life when through active uh, way like uh, sex pili mating then that is conjugation and transduction is only through phage or uh, viruses of bacteria in fact one then this is uh, like infected they, they, they can be able to transport from one cell maybe that the genetic material from one to the other most likely a uh, small fragment eh? genes like plasmid like uh, specific genes when this is uh, uh, lysed eh? or destroyed some phages integrate their nucleic uh, material in here in such a way when it dies then uh, they can take the small fragment from one host to from one bacterium to another and change this to be same as the virulent uh, strain and this is uh, very often a phenomenon with e coli escherichia coli which is normally a, a normal flora in the gut but can be easily uh, changed to virulent form by the stream mechanism of, of mating or uh, a transduction or transformation. So they can exchange all to make uh, possible the adherence, anterotoxin, invasiveness or cytotoxicity. All these are uh, virulent factors that are associated with uh, some uh, genes either on plasmid or on some strains uh, genomic material. Is that clear now? Is that clear? Clear. <laughs> so, uh, As we say, a question? A question? Yes. Um, I did not get the meaning of. The meaning of what? Come again, Bibian. Which meaning, Bibian? Can you explain the meaning that you didn't? Uh... Uh, the phase. What does it mean? No, I can't hear you. Can you repeat loudly? I did not get <coughs> well the meaning of a phage. A phage is a virus that infects bacteria. So we say uh, phage, but uh, normally these are viruses. Eh? You know virus? Maybe you haven't uh, studied viruses. Eh? So viruses are, uh, are particles. We, we see that they are not uh, living uh, cell, but with property uh, which uh, seem to be like life. Eh? They can replicate, they can do what, and they can infect hosts, a, different, a wide range of hosts. So the, the viruses that infect bacteria are called phages. Is that okay? Is clear? Yes. Yes. So, uh, these are just uh, some 
pathogen for bacteria. They infect and they kill bacteria or stay with bacteria. Bacterial virulence mechanism, we have adherence, invasion, byproduct of growth, that is uh, acid, some enzymes, toxin, degradative enzymes, to toxic protein, we have endotoxin, super antigen, huh? induction of excess, excess inflammation that destroy the host uh, somatic cells, invasion of uh, immune uh, response, either phagocyte or uh, even specific immune, how do they evade? They produce capsule that uh, can allow bacteria to escape from phagocytosis. And some uh, pathogens are also having gene that allow them to resist against antibiotics. So, uh, Question, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. I had a question. Yeah, you, you have said that the the E. coli you have seen that is the normal flora. Mm -hmm. So what if the E. coli becomes becomes but, but, ha, ha, now gets the the ability if the E. Yeah. coli gets the ability to to cause the to cause disease, mm -hmm. then you are going to give antibiotics, but still you need the the E. coli for some functions, like maybe increasing the motility or maybe also it helps in some reabsorption of vitamins. Then how are you going to? to maybe to counteract those effects that are caused by the lack of the E. coli. Yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is an important question. No? So E. coli is a, a normal flora of guts, huh? of the GIT, huh? the gastrointestinal tract. Huh? So it is uh, uh, in our large intestine, and it is always there. However, in most cases, they don't have this uh, this uh, virulence factors. Eh? They don't have this uh, uh, toxin producing ability or invasiveness. Mm? They don't have these genes. And when you have a strain that have this ability, it will immediately cause disease. It will cause, uh, we see that E. coli is pathogenic eh? and uh, can cause a really uh, serious disease. However, as you said, when you administer antibiotics, it will not only kill the, the E. coli with the uh, ability to cause disease, but it will kill. <laughs> Not even only E. coli, it will also kill other normal flora in the gut. Do you follow? And that is where we say if the antibiotics is used for shorter period, it will, of course, kill the pathogen and the normal flora. But when it is used in a few uh, or limited period, then the normal flora we uh, restore quickly. Eh? It will restore quickly. It doesn't take too long to have the same amount of uh, normal E. coli. And this does not happen uh, often. Eh? So it is not easy to acquire this, uh, this virulence factors genes. Mm? It is uh, acquired by some strains. And this thing can be the one to be transmitted between the individuals. It doesn't happen often that a bacteria gets uh, these genes easily. 
it happened to one strain and this strain transmit from one host to another in another you restore quickly you 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 you, you can it's uh, in limited time in the, the, the normal flora we restore just after antibiotics quickly. And when the antibiotics, there is no option to use it in short uh, period, you have to use it longer, then they really have to select the antibiotics that have to be uh, used. Because if you use uh, the white spectrum, we just kill many of the, the normal flora and cause problem to the host. Huh? As even the few uh, pathogens coming in can cause problem. So it is important always to consider what are you going to treat with huh? the patient. And, and that is uh, very critical to clinicians nowadays eh? where sometimes they just uh, give uh, wide spectrum in the patient, we after getting cured of the initial pathogen, but the patient had already problem. Yeah? As the normal flora, we uh, we take longer to restore. The patient we suffer from other problem. And uh, yeah, the patient now is cured from typhoid or other infections. Then he have another. Uh, infection due to antibiotics. Murabyumva. Kuvuga ngo iyo ugiye kuvura case ngizi ngizi za zabarwayi bafite so you choose the specific uh, uh, antibiotics importantly to not choose the wide spectrum. Wide spectrum ni ni antibiotics ziba ziri bukore kuri kuri uh, wide range of uh, bacteria ziki cha normal flora zuko ko utandukanye ziki cha ya pathogen of course ariko niba zishe normal flora zitandukanye biravuga ko aho hantu izo normal flora za protecting cyangwa za rinda gakugurwayi haraba uh, susceptible haraba ready kwakira new pathogen if nif in small inoculum it will cause disease muko twabibonye just then 10 microorganisms, 10 bacteria can cause problem to the host that Hariat uh, Kwabuze mouse, Yabuze, no more florias, Changa, Zagavan, Tsakirokinin. So there is always uh, such important uh, reasoning and way the harm and benefit. Sibjo, Gomba Kumenyako, Igeto, Srigu Koresha, antibiotics. Hari harm ugiye guteza kuri cost. Sibyo. Iyo harm ugomba kuyikora ku buryo iba limited time kandi kaba ita affecting izo normal flora zugo ko butandukanye. So as this normal flora E. coli is in our gut, it can also protect us from the virulent E. coli. Kuberiki who uh, can explain that? How does it protect from the virulent E. coli? Yes, Mizero M. Olivier. How can it protect uh, from the pathogenic one? How can the normal flora, E. coli normal flora, can protect from the Hello? Hello? Yes, I mean, How can it? Hello? So, 
So it, it as as the shares uh, antigen. Can you can you please switch off your microphone, please? So you as you don't uh, answer, please uh, switch off. Huh? I was going to say that a normal flora take the variant uh, bacteria I, by secreting some to, some materials which forbid the the variant ones to cause in disease. Yeah, so they will compete with them, but also they will allow the the, the mucosa immunity uh, to produce uh, cross. Huh? Cross reactive uh, immunity. Where are Zirimuri Zirimoharia Muri Muri Gats? Zifite Zifite antigen, Zisanese, Ziri pathogenic. Then they stimulate the immune response. In such way, the immune response is always, uh, or the, the antibodies are on the mucosa and they can quickly protect uh, from this virulent one. Where are called Zifite cross immunity, Zifite. Uh, shared antigens, so they can allow the host immune response to generate a response even before this pathogen comes in. And thus, they can protect from from uh, the pathogen. Huh? Is that clear? Yes. So. Uh, Maybe we can take a small break for 15 minutes. Before we go to break, I have one question. Yes. Yes, we have seen that there is two equals one variant and another unvariant. So what's can the character between one variant what, one equals yeah, what, variant? What is your name, please? Before Francis. you ask the question, always let's... Uh, Let's have this introduction. Who? Okay. This is Francois talking. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask wh wh which the character do those equally have, which differentiate them to be one being a variant, another a variant? Uh, did you follow? Uh, anyone can uh, can answer? Thank you, Francis. Yes, lecture. Can answer? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm I'm Christian. Uh, for my side, I think uh the violent E. coli, uh the and the non-violent E. coli, they're different in the their plasmid and genomic characters. So the violent one have the plasmid and change in uh, genomic character which make it very virulent. The problem I have, a teacher said that they have some genetic material which are the same like genes. Mm -hmm. So what make them different as, as long as they have the same genes? So what factor is going to make them differ from one another? Do you see my pencil? Yeah, I uh, thank you, uh, Chris. It's bon. It's good. So, do you see my red pencil here? Yes, yes, we can see. Yeah. So, in this, in this E. coli, in this uh, virulent E. coli, there is uh, a gene which is missing here, which is missing in here. And this gene is not uh, is not essential for the life of this cell. This cell have or this bacteria have also acquired this gene, either through uh, conjugation, transduction, transformation. And this gene confer this bacterium ability to produce some. Uh, virulent factors, which does not uh, uh, originally have here. Do you follow? And this this gene 
also may not only be in the chromosomal DNA, but it can also be in the extra chromosomal area, like on plasmid. Do you follow? By, by yes, the way, yes. these are not ordinary uh, or uh, the natural uh, feature of uh, this bacteria is that these genes are not there. But this bacteria acquired this through this either one of these three uh, mechanisms. And descendant of this uh, strain, here we say strain, because this is one type, uh, same species, but with different, uh, different uh, genomic uh, components. Eh? And the descendant of this one, we still have this uh, this gene, eh? and when you have like uh, a strain with uh, this character of uh, having uh, virulent genes, E. coli with virulent genes, this E. coli is uh, totally different from this in terms of pathogenicity. This will be a strict pathogen. Yet, this is a normal flora. Do you follow, Francois? So, this one acquired, or this virulent one, acquired some uh, genes that confer some property which are originally uh, absent from the, 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 the E. coli, the normal E. coli. So, which means maybe this uh, virulent E. coli has developed a mutation which brought this uh, some this this uh, virulent gene, because as if they are the same, I think that if they are ex exchanging materials, none could give what it doesn't have. So maybe one does one got it by mutation or some adaptation. Yeah, we have this plasmid. Eh? Did you? Uh... Did you understand how plasmids uh, comes in in uh, bacteria? Uh, they can no, they can uh, get in either by conjugation or uh, transduction or transformation. And plasmid, yes. uh, the plasmid, uh, the genes, uh, the set of genes. See you. Is your genes? The yes. uh, bacteria ya wonye. See you. The mm. have property. Zitandukani, ziha characteristics zitandukani. Zishowara kuiha characteristics yo ku resisting a given antibiotics. Mm. Zishowara kuiha virulence factor. Igahi luka, ikawa virulent, yari a virulent, or yari yari no more. Itate zagiki was. Mm. So, by acquiring this one, this bacteria can change. And this one can also not remain extra chromosomal. Sometimes it can be integrated in the chromosome of bacteria. Yes. Who can uh, tell us when the plasmid is inserted here? How do we call this? Episomes. Hmm? Episomes. So when you have episome here with that property of resisting to antibiotics, with that property of being uh, or producing virulence factor, then this E. coli change from a virulent to virulent. And this plasmid, eh, plasmid are just shared between bacteria. Plasmid can be acquired uh, whenever. And uh, can be with some strains, but not with all strains. Strains are not individual bacteria uh, group. Not descendants. In this species, we can use strains that have the plasmids in this species. But they belong to, them, to the same species because the similarity of their genomic DNA this is not part of the, the original DNA. They are extra chromosomal, 
or even integrated, but they are not part of the DNA of this bacteria. And these are now different. One is a virulent and another one is virulent. If you wonder how does this happen to receive this chromosome, it can receive this, uh, this uh, plasmid, it can receive this either through transformation, transduction, or conjugation. And some, some bacteria, Zimemory bacteria, have Zigira plasmid. Eh? The resistance is uh, or uh, let's say, mycobacterium tuberculosis. We never receive plasmid, can never receive plasmid, hmm? can never do conjugation, eh? transduction, or transformation. The mutation, point mutation, is the only way they resist antibiotics. So they develop mutation when replicating mm, the DNA by random mutation. That is how they develop resistant to antibiotics, but they don't use plasmid. While some other bacteria, they, let's say most of Enterobacteria, uh, including Vibrio, Tuzawonana, positive agent, ya, ya cholera, is typically linked with a plasmid. Hmm? So some other bacteria will we, we be ready to receive plasmid either through this uh, kind of uh, either sharing between cell actively or just <laughs> receiving from environment in which uh, or receiving from uh, uh, phages. Eh? Phages is infecting E. coli, Ariki is infecting in the bacteria, different from E. coli. And this bacteria infected here, when it has some genomic features that can be also transferred to another bacteria by infection of the same phage, if you to go on the transdiction. Francois, do you follow? Yes, yes. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we can have a break of uh, 15 minutes. So we meet at 11.20. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Oh, here you have another question concerning this E. coli. Yeah, can you hold your oh, question about... until we are back, please? Okay. Please no don't problem. forget. Eh? Who is that one? Yes. Is that? Adria. Adria. Okay. Adria, yeah. don't forget. Eh? So once you are back, that is 11.20. Please uh, ask your question. Yes, sir. Some black or white.
podcast. Hello, mm. my name is Aida Muzatsi and I'm a health journalist. Now, what you may not realize is that the number of cancer patients are increasing in low and middle income countries such as ours. And not only are our patients diagnosed late, they frequently do not complete their care. Now, this could be due to lack of awareness. So my call to journalists like me is to use the media to create awareness about cancer to help. Hi, hi, my name is Miriam and I'm a breast surgical oncologist. Hello, mm. my name is Aida Muzatsi and I'm a health journalist. Now, what you may not realize is that the number of cancer patients are increasing. And I'm a breast surgical oncologist. Hello, my name is Aida Muzatsi. Hi, my name is Miriam and I'm a breast surgical oncologist. Hello, my name is Aida Muzatsi and I'm a health journalist. Now, what you may not realize is that the number of cancer patients are increasing in low and middle income countries such as ours. And not only are our patients diagnosed late, they frequently do not complete their care. Now, this could be due to lack of awareness. So my call to journalists like me is to use the media to create awareness about cancer to help reduce these numbers. Quite a significant uh, bit, especially in our communities, is the social cultural barriers that exist around cancers, whether it's the narratives we tell that cancer equals death and cancer fatalism, the stigma around cancers, all of these uh, can be uh, addressed through raising awareness and really having these conversations in these public spaces. So we are marking cancer. Awareness Day and this year's theme is closing the care gap. And so through raising awareness, really percolating this down to the communities, Ida and I are working together to close the care gap. We pray around Hello? Yeah.
Hi, my name is Miriam and I'm a breast surgical oncologist. Hello, my name is Aida Muzatsi and I'm a health journalist. Now, what you may not realize is that the number So are you all back? Can we continue? Can you please switch your, your mic? So the question, the question that was on hold, are you there? For the question? Yes, yes, I'm here. So, Adri, can you go ahead? Yes, yes I'm here. Oh, my question is this. Oh, it's about chemotherapy. Uh, is that medication going to affect specifically this E. coli with uh, acquired genome? Or... It is it will gonna take all of this. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyone to answer? Anyone can answer the question? Anyone can answer the question? So basically, most of antibiotics we not take the dose with the with that. They will target or they will kill all, uh, including the one that are pathogenic and non-pathogenic. You follow? And that is why uh, it is uh, crucial to really select which antibiotics are you going to use. Some can limit the effect to a narrow, hmm, narrow range of uh, bacteria, but the antibiotics uh, normally accept those with a resistance uh, pattern. Otherwise, it will not select uh, the virulent from a virulent. It will kill both virulent and avirulent. And that is where we said the host, uh, the host, affected host, will restore this quickly. The, the normal flora will be restored quickly. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Andrea? Yeah. Then yes, there is a, 
factors associated with virulence. One, as you said, the bacteria have to really stick on, uh, on the host cell and it uses adhesins. Eh? Some of adhesin are uh, pili, mm? like uh, fimbri, we have seen this. And some others are just secre secretory substances on the surface. And uh, those are called non fimbrio adhesins. So um, then after adhesion, it has to invade the host. It has to get in mm, of the host uh, to damage tissues, either by gross uh, byproduct, mm, like tissue degrading enzyme. We see some. Uh, bacteria produce here alone does that destroy the collagen tissues mm? and uh, immunopathogenesis, eh? like uh, stimulating the, the the immune response or the immune response produced for bacteria will not only come and select bacteria, it will come and destroy the the all the environment where the bacteria is located. So it will destroy the, the host cell, it will at same time with bacteria, but uh, having destruction of host cell, we immediately be linked with the problem. Sorry for the small interruption. Eh? So, uh, so we're saying uh, adhesin that is to stick on uh, the host cell, invasion of the host cell, so the, the, the tissue can be damaged by either gross byproduct, that is mostly uh, degrading, the tissue degrading enzymes also, or even uh, immunopathogenesis, that is like... Uh, if the cytokines are just poured in the, for bacteria killing, it will not only kill bacteria, but it will also affect all other cells in the environment. We have toxin. In toxin, we have two categories. We have exotoxin, but we also have endotoxin. Exotoxin are cytolytic enzymes Mm, we, we see that they have component A and B, mm, anterotoxin, there is super antigens, uh, the endotoxin, and other CO components can also produce some reaction to the, to the host. Mm. There is also antiphagocytic factors, eh, like, uh, uh, like we said, uh, the capsule, the slim, mm, allow bacteria to really um, escape or uh, antagonize uh, the, uh, the phagocytes. So some bacteria can be able to live uh, intracellularly, they can live inside. Some other bacteria can be able to vary their antigen. Uh, we see what is called antigenic variation mm, in Bolaria reticulatis, mm, some phase variation. So uh, some iron acquisition mm, by, by depriving the host uh, iron, then they can uh, produce a problem to the host. Mm. They have these receptors, iron containing molecules to, 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 and resistant to antibiotics. These have been discussed. All these are um, factors linked with virulence. Eh? And uh, some bacteria have this in large number and diverse, and those are then more virulent than others.
So uh, adhesion, as we said, uh, the bacteria have to adhere on uh, epithelial and arterial cells to allow them to colonize the tissue. There is common adhesin, which is mostly uh, fimbri or uh, on the outside structure, lipoteicoic acid, as we have seen, mm, surface protein or lectin, those are common uh, adhesin. And we have biofilm, eh? and biofilm is more sticky web of polysaccharide that uh, regroup all bacteria together in the same environment. Mm -hmm. And this facilitates the bacteria to colonize the area for longer. And this mostly created on uh, surgical appliances like artificial valve or uh, catheters, sometimes on dental plaque. Mm -hmm. So, this biofilm, we mostly protect the bacteria from the defense of the immunity, but also from the antibiotics. So, the, the antibiotics cannot get in this biofilm, large biofilm, then the bacteria are protected somehow. How does bacteria invade the host cell? In most cells, Cases they go through this uh, uh, M cell, microfold cells, and uh, as these have the link between the lymph node organelle here, the bacteria in the lumen can just cross in here, and the antigen presenting cells can already engulf this to present the antigen to the uh, to the cell, to the immune cell, and most cases, this is how the bacteria gets in. As we said, some bacteria will be even able to to replicate or to divide within the macrophage. They can escape from the lysosome. When entering, they create uh, a a membrane in which this bacteria is engulfed, and this is a lysosome, and some bacteria will just destroy this and escape from this uh, prison of the, of the phagocytes and start destroying uh, or dividing within the cytoplasm of this. Some others will produce uh, endotoxin, and endotoxin mediated to Toxicity we uh, we uh, lead to fever, mm -hmm. leukopenia, followed by leukocytosis, activation of complement, thrombostopenia, disseminated intravascular coagulation, mm -hmm. decrease in peripheral circulation, and shock and death mm -hmm. due to this endotoxin. Eh? They have a very huge this. Uh, the name here is uh, lipopolysaccharide. Eh? I think you have seen this. And they have a wide range of uh, action mm -hmm, where sometimes they induce this uh, monocyte to secrete interkin-1, tumor necrosing factor, mm -hmm, which then uh, reduce ion, affect the liver. Lipopolysaccharide can also uh, uh, as we see, uh, uh, have effect on platelets. Mm -hmm. Then these have then a uh, problem with uh, increased vascular permeability, leading to hypotension and shock. It can also uh, activate mm -hmm, the complement pathway. By activating complement pathway, you produce uh, activated complement five, uh, three, which are also agents of uh, inducing shock. Lipoprosaccharide also can lead to act to endothelial cells and uh, increase vasovascular permeability. So they have a wide range of action that leads to all these uh, problems and uh, finally uh, to death. Mm -hmm. And you have seen that. Uh, Lipopolysaccharide is component of most gram-negative bacteria.
So, uh, but also some gram positive with uh, uh, peptidoglycan with tachoic acid, mm, lipotechoic acid, uh, stimulate pyrogenic, this is fever related, acute phase response and uh, can imitate or seem to be like endotoxin. Mm. Also shock kind of. So this is endotoxin, which is mostly released when the bacteria die. Eh? So it is always linked with the bacteria. It is not excreted uh, in the environment like exotoxin, but when the bacteria die, all this effect comes in. So we have uh, super antigen mediated toxicity. So uh, the super antigen bind on T cell receptor and activate T cell eh, with or without antigen. T keep uh, stimulated and we produce a overwhelming response, mm -hmm. autoimmune like response. Eh, to continuously uh, produce uh, this action in the streptococcus, uh, staphylococcus aureus, which produce a toxic shock syndrome toxin. Is, uh, this uh, toxin is more uh, like a super antigen and induce the stimulation of the immune response, same as uh, streptococci pyro pyogenes, Mm -hmm. Streptococci of group A, which uh, produce erythrogenic toxin A or C. Also, they are super antigen that stimulate uh, the immune response in such way. The response we not limit to bacteria, but also killing the the cell. The, that uh, we act like uh, autoimmune, so that we kill the the host components. So we have uh, exotoxin, and exotoxin are mostly uh, peptides. They are just uh, extracted from, uh, from the cell, and uh, they mostly have two, uh, two chain, chain A and B. The chain B facilitate uh, a binding and promote entry of the A chain, which have uh, vital function, uh, which uh, have then the, the, the toxicity function, uh, inhibitory activity again is some vital function. So, for example, this is uh, inhibition of protein synthesis by Colinibacterium diphtheria. The toxin, the diphtheria toxin, get in the cell by binding on the receptor and the chain A just getting activates elong elongation factor so they 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 they, they, they inhibit hmm? they inhibit protein synthesis by in inactivating the elongation uh, factor elongation factor of the protein then by inactivating the elongation factor of the protein, then the synthesis of protein is, uh, is prevented. By preventing protein synthesis of the cell, the cell will definitely die. And uh, this will lead to, to death of cell, huh? and uh, then uh, the disease will just appear as cause of more cell dying because of uh, uh, protein uh, synthesis blocked. Mm -hmm. So hypersecretion, inhibition of neurotransmitters, release, these are other kinds that we are going to see. In many cases, the toxin gene is encoded on uh, plasmid or a lysogenic phage. Mm -hmm. We see that there is uh, something called lysogenic phage that is a phage that is integrated in the chromosome of bacteria. And uh, having these toxin genes, 
in case of uh, uh, cornibacterial diphtheria, we see that it is encoded by toxin gen are uh, part of plasmid, and uh, they will always cause this. And some uh, cornibacteria uh, diphtheria without this will not cause any harm. So in case of uh, the other two pathogen, let's say uh, Clostridium tetani, which uh, produce exotoxin also, tetanospasmin, and this this uh, this toxin inhibits the inhibitory transmitters, so they block the inhibitory transmitters. Excitatory transmitters are re released from the, 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 the nervous vascos, and uh, the muscles then, which does not been able to to receive the inhibitory transmitters because they are blocked, the continuous stimulation by excitatory transmitters. So the, the muscle will continuously be uh, contracted, will be stimulated continuously because the inhibitory transmitters are not being released because of blockage by this toxin. So that is how the tetani uh, works. Eh? So although we reach there, but this is how the toxin works. Different to botulinum, Clostridium botulinum, the toxin from Clostridium botulinum just block the acetylcholine containing vesicle. They will block the, 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 the secretion of this, uh, this acetylcholine. And by blocking this secretion, then the muscle cannot contract, eh? cannot, uh, cannot be stimulated. Eh? Toxin blocks uh, release of acetylcholine from the vehicle. St stimulation is blocked because this is the, 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 the source of stimulation of the muscle fibers. Then the, 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 what, uh, what happened? This will lead to paralysis. So paralysis continuous uh, stimulation. You, you can see how these two toxins act in a different way, but both affecting the, the body uh, and entire body. And this we quickly lead to death, eh? either uh, tetani, clostridium tetani, or uh, botulinism, uh, they will lead uh, to, to really uh, quick death. And this is a mode of function. If we say this is a, a colobacteria diphtheria, which inhibit elongation of protein, thus uh, leading to cell death, Clostridium tetani, uh, secreting toxin that can really block the inhibitory transmitters, allowing the muscle to continuously uh, st uh, contract because the acetylcholine will be released, but inhibitory not released. While botulinum, we just uh, or uh, the the toxin we just block all acetylcholine uh, containing vesicles, and uh, by not releasing this, this muscle we never uh, contract. Eh? So stimulation blocked. Then this is uh, paralysis, and uh, imagine the paralysis of uh, respiratory tract uh, muscle, then that is a uh, quick death. So microbial defense against host immunogenic clearance, one is uh, capsule, eh, encapsulation. Encapsulation uh, inhibit phagostosis. Eh? and bac bactericidal effect, serum bactericidal effect. So because the capsule is just the envelope that enclosed the bacteria, it will protect the bacteria from the immune uh, system of the host. Antigenic mimicry, that means they can mimic the antigen of the host in such way when uh, the host sees uh, the pathogen, 
they don't recognize the difference between seller and non seller. And, and then it must be and then it for phase variation that we said. That means uh, they can vary the antigen and uh, confuse uh, the host immune uh, system, or they can be able to multiply intracellularly. So if they are replicating in the cell, then it is uh, away from antibodies, and uh, we just be inside protected, and uh, the bacteria will not uh, be destroyed because it is already within the cell. Some can escape phagosome, and uh, we have seen, we see this, uh, mycobacterium can easily escape the phagosome, when uh, where other bacteria can just be destroyed in there quickly. So uh, some can inhibit uh, phagolysosome fission. So that means there is a lysosome which contain enzymes, uh, lytic enzymes, and there is phagosome that just uh, have this uh, bacteria from outside then uh, normally these have to match or to, to, to fuse, to get together, so that the enzyme gets poured in this uh, uh, bacteria containing uh, membrane, phagosome, and kill the bacteria. But some bacteria have the ability to inhibit such fusion. The lysosomal enzymes or uh, the, the lysosome remain aside and the phag phagosome remain on the other side. Hmm? Sometimes they are also resistant to lysosomal, enzyme, uh, lysosomal enzymes. Even if the fusion happens, this enzyme will not kill the bacteria because the bacteria have that a bit of resistance. Uh, production of anti-immunoglobulin protease, inhibition of uh, chemotaxis, destruction of phagocytes. All these are uh, potential uh, uh, defense of bacteria to, to host the defense. Mm? So the, the bacteria have to really uh, fight eh, so that they can survive and cause disease. So this is what uh, we just said, the uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, protein A inhibit opsonization. Opsonization is uh, at, uh, by antibodies, by attaching antibodies to allow phagostosis. So they inhibit uh, that uh, process of opson opsonization. Mm. They inhibit also chemotaxis. Mm. They can kill phagocytes. Mm. When the phagocyte has ingested them, they can just kill them. Hmm? So uh, they can inhibit uh, phagocytosis. That is the case of uh, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae capsule. When capsulated, this phagocyte cannot really engulf this, uh, cannot engulf this bacteria because of this capsule. Phagostosis can also take place, but once it's, uh, it's, uh, it's in, in phagosome, the bacteria can be able to inhibit lysosomal fission. As we said, uh, mycobacterium, which is in here, it's just uh, getting from here. It is engulfed and uh, it entry with uh, the outside uh, phagosome. But as lysosome enzymes are in here, the mycobacterium can just inhibit fusion of these two uh, vesicles. By inhibiting, then they can really uh, not kill by this enzyme containing here. They can also escape lysosome and grow in cytoplasm. They can just destroy this phagosome 
and uh, grow in cytoplasm of phagocyte. And this is really uh, strong as uh, dividing within the cell, the immune cell will make them more safe and uh, they will then uh, start uh, dividing. Phagocyte is destroyed. If immune uh, response will come and induce immunopathogenesis by pouring cytokine in environment intended to mostly kill bacteria, but it will not uh, only kill bacteria, it will also kill the other uh, cell in the environment. Some bacteria are just uh, resistant to antibacterial lysosoma action and multiply within the cell. Block activation by interferon gamma. They don't uh, want interferon gamma to get. In. So factors uh, that uh, may be regulated to regulate virulence factors. Environmental factors often control the expression of the virulence genes, like temperature, ion availability or smolarity, growth phase, pH, specific ion. All these factors can lead to regulation of virulence factor, as these virulence factor are just produced from diverse uh, uh, component, but also uh, following some uh, biochemical reaction. So by inhibiting those uh, pathway, either by depriving uh, with uh, some components, some iron, but also uh, changing the temperature, we influence the factors, the virulence factor production in your media. If you want say, enzyme, if you want toxin, and so on. Any question? If no question, they are pioneer in discovering and studying disease caused by microorganisms. Eh? There is a germ theory of disease hmm, where it, is, it was uh, suggested that microorganisms can cause disease and can spread and reemerge. So, Louis Pasteur hmm, proved that yeast are living organisms that ferment wine. Robert Koch has discovered many bacteria, hmm, but also proved that bacteria are actually cause of disease. Hmm. How did he do this? So, uh, there is uh, four postulates of uh, Koch. One is that microorganism must be present in every case of the disease. That means in each of the case, you should find the same bacteria. Organism must be grown in pure culture from the disease host. It means the bacteria cannot only uh, be, uh, it, it has to be grown. Huh? You can see that same disease must be produced when a pure culture of organism is injected into another host. If you use the same culture, the same organism, you should produce the same feature of the disease. And the same organism must be recovered from the experimentally infected host. Summary, that means you can isolate always the microorganism from the, the host, you know, the animal. On the, in the lab, you can observe the microorganism. And this microorganism, when you inject to the new host, they, they should produce the same disease. Eh? And when produce the same disease, you can again or recover the same organism observe the same organism in pure culture. 
you can identify this organism and see that it is the same as this. These are uh, coach postulates. However, we said that, um, as we said, that not all uh, pathogen can be grown huh, in pure culture. No, some pathogen will not grow in pure culture. So those are uh, limitation of uh, core postulates, and that is where uh, the molecular uh, postulates of uh, pathogenesis comes in. Huh? Sometimes uh, proving this pathogen may not be possible with a recovery in the lab on growing, but with molecular technique, you are able to find the same DNA from this host and this one. This is then complete as a postulate, deviating the initial uh, postulate from this uh, uh, great man. So, uh, classifying uh, infectious disease, there is symptom, which is change in both function and signs. Uh, the, the physician can observe and measure that is temperature hmm, or uh, some other uh, observable features. Hmm. There is communicable disease, contagious disease, and non-communicable disease. All this you know, I think. Incidence, you know, uh, occurrence of disease, prevalence, you all know this, I think. Uh, sporadic disease, when uh, occur occasionally, endemic disease, uh, constantly present in the population, uh, epidemic, and all this can be uh, characterized in microorganisms. Uh, uh, pandemic, they are all over the world. Now we have uh, COVID pandemic, but uh, some other bacteria is also worldwide. Eh? Let's say TB is worldwide. Eh? Although some, some areas are more affected than others, but uh, in general, it's uh, global. So severity or uh, duration of disease, there is primary infection, that is initial infection, mm. acute infection uh, with symptoms that uh, have rapid onset, mm. last short time, mm. very short time, chronic, more slowly, last longer, latent infection, remain inactive, mm. then become active again, produce symptoms depending on the the equilibrium between host and, uh, and pathogen. So extent of uh, host uh, involvement, there is local infection, there is systemic infection, sepsis, uh, sepsemia. Mm -hmm. So micro are just limited in small area of the body, on skin, on uh, mucous membrane. While systemic uh, means micro products of the body. In sepsis, this is toxic inflammatory condition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all this, you know, I think. And how uh, the, the development of disease, there is intubation failure. That is the time and travel between initial infection and the first appearance of uh, any symptoms, signs. So that is the infection period, pro prodomo period. That is the early disease where the symptoms are just mild. There is a period of illness when disease is most acute. So the patient is several years of uh, Difficult condition, then a uh, period of decline, symptoms, uh, it's, uh, signs just decline. Period of convalescence, yeah, person regains strength and the body returns to pre-disease state. Eh? So, the just recovery, 
So all these steps are uh, also uh, distinguishable with uh, bacteria in this, with time. Mm -hmm. So we have incubation, no symptoms, until the first symptom comes in, prodomo, the illness period, which is most severe sign and symptoms, and the sign decline, where we have uh, fight symptoms, but not as severe as uh, in this uh, illness period. And then we have uh, the period of convalescence where you have uh, uh, the symptoms are just uh, being uh, off. And bacteria have these uh, features. Or if the host doesn't die, it will definitely uh, get to the environment. How does uh, the, the disease is established? I think you have gone through all this. Transmission, that is the first, that the body are there for stick on host tissue, penetrate or end, evade host defense. Then damage the host tissue by different mechanisms that you have. So transmission of disease is either by contact, by vector, uh, by vehicle, but not biological. So there is a um, direct contact transmission. If we say contact, that is physical contact between organism source and the susceptible host. In direct contact transmission, when the microorganism transmits from the same part of susceptible host by the non leaking object. Can you, can you please switch off the, the microphone? Then drop it. Can you please switch the microphone? We have a few uh, our lecture. Let's say 15, uh, 15 to 20 minutes max. Can you please share my prints? Can you please close a bit? So we have also the question. Droplet that is mostly uh, by uh, respiratory tract transmission, mm -hmm. microorganisms spread by droplet that travel only short distance. Eh? So people have to be closer to each other. So we have vehicle transmission, which we say it's uh, a non living uh, uh, material that can just disseminate the disease. Uh, waterborne transmission. Gapo, do you have problem? No problem. Yeah, please uh, try to be quiet. Eh? Just a few minutes to complete what we have prepared for today. So waterborne transmission, like uh, sewage, mm, poorly treated water, mm, that can contaminate water, and uh, by drinking this water or using this water, then the host can be uh, infected. Foodborne transmission, mm, that is usually incom incompletely cooked, poorly refrigerated uh, or prepared under uh, poor san sanitary condition. Airborne transmission, mm -hmm. 
via droplet that travel uh, uh, short distance. Yeah? All these are vehicle transmission. And then uh, we have vectors, yeah? arthropods uh, mostly. Some are uh, just mechanical. That means uh, the passive transport of the pathogen on insect feet or other body parts. So it doesn't have any bi biological uh, active uh, process, but just uh, having this on their body parts, they can then transmit to the host. Some others are biological, uh, uh, biological uh, vectors, yeah. which ensure biological transmission. So this means the active role of uh, vector is uh, Entry point, we have mucous membrane, we have skin, we have uh, the injection uh, that we do. All these can be the entry point of uh, the pathogen, the bacteria. We said adherence is the first. We have seen adhesins, ligands on microbes and receptor on host. This may be uh, located on glucocalyx or other microbial surfaces such as pili, fragella, and uh, allow this bacteria to really stick on their host. And how does it penetrate to the, to the host mm, by, by evading the defense? Mm. Either to have capsule that inhibit phagocytosis, some component of cell facilitation, some enzyme, some uh, variation of antigen we have seen, then penetration into cell uh, cytosecleton. So it means by being inside host cell, we, we just protect uh, the bacteria from being uh, killed or uh, neutralized by the immune system, host immune system. Capsule, we, we have seen this. Mm -hmm. So it impairs phagocytosis. Sometimes the immune system can overcome this. Some strain of the same bacteria have glucocalyx, others do not. Huh? So that is where we said capsule is not uh, essential. It can be uh, with some strength, but not others. Some component of the cell wall, like uh, M protein, mm, that can uh, really contribute to pathogenicity, fimbri, waxes, all these can really help the pathogen to. Some enzyme, some bacteria secrete enzymes like coagulase, kinase, hyaluronidase, mm, that uh, really uh, break uh, the connective tissue. Even collagenase that breaks down collagens, and this uh, enzyme uh, machinery can allow the bacteria to get in deep tissue or uh, destroy the component of this tissue. We have also said antigenic variation. So by changing the antigen, the, 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 the body will, or the host will require to change the antibody. Hmm? Make it more difficult to, for immune system to fight against them because of changing the feature and so on. Uh, that is uh, that is mostly done by viruses. We see influenza, but also we have antigenic variation in bacteria like Borrelia. We see Borrelia reticulatis, which change the antigens. So some bacteria we just get inside the, the, the cell host mm, and trigger signals in host cell that 
activate factors that result in the entry of some bacteria. Mm -hmm. They can produce inversion, which uh, re rearrange actin. They can cause uh, the disruption. So the bacteria makes actively the entry possible. And we have seen that uh, if pathogen overcome host, uh, then micro can damage host cell by using host cell nutrients, depriving host cell nutrients, causing direct damage, inducing a hypersensitivity reaction that is overwhelming immune response or producing toxin or enzymes. So some uh, bacteria we just uh, <laughs> just uh, take iron and uh, away from iron transport uh, protein and uh, the cell will die because of this. Eh? They will not uh, produce protein, eh? essential protein. So they can cause uh, direct damage. Eh? by waste product from the pathogen and uh, by damaging the, 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 the host cell, then this also have an influence on uh, immunopathology, mm -hmm. they, 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 they. inducing uh, immunopathology or uh, hypersensitivity reaction. So, uh, with people who know already the same antigen, they can produce an overwhelming immune reaction, which we definitely damage uh, the inner or the self uh, structures, mm, the cell, the tissue of the host. We have also seen that production of toxin, mm, which can lead to fever, to cardiovascular dis disturbance, diarrhea, and shock. So we have two types, endotoxin and exotoxin. Normally exotoxin are uh, excreted from uh, the cell, mm -hmm. are produced inside mostly gram-positive bacteria as part of their growth and metabolism and they are then released in the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. So they can be then uh, diffused in system, systemic by blood uh, to all over the body. Mm -hmm. This is the case of uh, bacteria diphtheria, that is the case of uh, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, but not in uh, then uh, endotoxin, which are only released when the, 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 the bacteria are dead, eh? are part of the outer portion of the cell wall mm? of gram-negative bacteria. They are only released when the bacteria die and the cell wall break apart. Eh? So it is inside. And then the bacteria have to be dead and the cell wall is uh, destroyed. That is when the endotoxin will be released and cause uh, their effect. So we have seen uh, some of this uh, exotoxin. We have seen that uh, three principal type, AB toxin, membrane dis disrupting toxin, and some are super antigen. So as uh, we say this is a bacterium producing an exotoxin. An exotoxin A, B have B as uh, the, the facilitator to adhere on a receptor, and the, the receptor is on the cell, and we allow this uh, component A to get in, and the component A is the one to disrupt the function of the cell. For example, by blocking the by blocking the pro protein production, 
by doing all that we have seen. So membrane uh, disrupting toxin mm -hmm. cause slices of uh, host cell by disrupting plasma membrane, form protein channel in plasma membrane, for example, disrupt phospholipid portion of membrane and destroy the membrane. By destroying the membrane, the, the, the cell will definitely die. Yeah? And super antigen, uh, that is where we say can provoke very strong immune response. And this immune response is uh, just there going to really cause more other symptoms. Mm -hmm. Produce fever, vomiting, diarrhea, sometimes even shock and death. So the most not known uh, exotoxin, diphtheria toxin, botulinum toxin, tetanus toxin, we have seen this. And endotoxin, contrary to exotoxin, this is mostly the out membrane of the cell of uh, gram-negative bacteria. Mm -hmm and uh, mostly released when the bacteria died, and they stimulate macrophage to release cytokine at very high level. So they, they, they just tell macrophage that they have to release huge amounts of cytokines, and these cytokines are uh, so when uh, ingested, the macrophage destroy the gram-negative bacteria, and uh, by destroying the gram-negative uh, uh, bacteria, then uh, this macrophage is uh, stimulated to release a lot uh, of uh, cytokines such as enterolkin-1. Mm -hmm. And when released in the blood, enterolkin-1, we uh, act on hypothalamus of the brain. And, uh, and induce uh, the prostaglandin, which regulate the, the, the thermostat. So the, 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 mm, the, 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 by producing this, uh, the, the temperature body will just be uh, altered and the fever just come from this one. And uh, the gram negative, uh, which is here, is already uh, killed, but the effect of the the immune system response or this stimulation of uh, excretion of uh, cytokines will lead to this uh, very uh, high fever uh, leading to a problem of the host, eh? to the host. So any, any problem so far? Any question? So if no question, uh, at the end, uh, we have a list of uh, a list of pathogen and can be categorized uh, if we say uh, by gram. We have gram-positive bacteria. In gram-positive, we have cocci and rods. And in cocci, gram-positive, we have aerobic and anaerobic. And aerobic are mostly facultative anaerobes, so they can uh, also uh, multiply in uh, absence of uh, oxygen. Mm -hmm. The strict anaerobe is this, and the road mm -hmm, or uh, the bacilli, we have aerobic, anaerobic, we have bacillus, listeria, nocardia, and this will be our next uh, lecturers by studying each of the bacteria, its property, how it causes disease, how diagnose, and how treat the patient with this condition, and how to prevent the infection from host to host, and uh, control the dissemination of the pathogen. Also, uh, uh, whether the, the vaccine or or other mechanism of prevent, prevention of the pathogen. So we have category of gram-positive, either bacilli or cocci, 
Bacilli or cocci. We have uh, gram negative uh, bacteria. We also have uh, cocci and bacilli. And uh, we see that uh, in uh, gram negative, we have uh, many pathogens, mm, many pathogens as well as uh, cocci, gram negative are very little. While some are poor extinct uh, species, eh? so they are not really classified with, uh, with gram. Uh, those include uh, an example of acid fast stain mycobacteria. Nocardia also is acid fast. Poor staining like mycoplasma, Legionella, Helicobacter. Some others here are uh, intracellular bacteria that cannot really be stained, like Cramdia, Rickettsia, who cannot stain because they are always inside the cell and uh, cannot be seen as their stain are poorly uh, visible. And some spirochetes, eh? that should be somewhere here. You don't see them on our map. We also have spirochetes, including uh, treponema uh, and uh, leptospira and others. So uh, this is how we learn just uh, from gram positive, cocci, gram positive, uh, gram negative cocci, gram positive rods, gram negative rods, and so on. And we do uh, systematically bacteria by bacteria and cover most uh, uh, medical uh, or clinical significant uh, species or uh, genus of bacteria. Any question? Any question? Are you still following? Are you still here? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, this is, uh, we are still here. So, uh, I think on, uh, on next lecture, we may introduce the virology, but I will also uh, try to provide you with some, uh, some uh, assignments that you need to do. Uh, I think uh, in order to make this more interactive, it is good that you also uh, organize some presentation, including on uh, diverse bacteria as we have seen. So we have uh, five group in GACO. Is that true, uh, Elvis? Elvis, are you following? Elvis, Elvis, are you there? So we have five groups in GACO. GACO, is that true? So, uh, and, yes, we have uh, five groups. And we have uh, how many groups in the Huye? 12? Did we uh, say 12? Moses? and colleagues. Yes, we have a 12 group. Yeah, then in total we have uh, 17 groups. Eh? So I will try to, to find uh, the, the, the way of making a specific topic for each of, uh, of the group so that we uh, we have a systematic uh, bacteriology all together with you presenting, not necessarily uh, me, but you also presenting. I will be complimenting, but I will divide uh, the assignment to all groups in such way you can prepare nice presentation on your topic, each group, and we have uh, the the days of presenting and uh, showing what you have summarized. 
Is that fine? It's fine. Mm. So that is one way of uh, having interactive uh, talk or interactive uh, lecturer in our next lectures. Likely Monday, we have um, introduction to virology. Monday. It will be difficult to be with uh, Prof. Mubuni, but uh, at one time he will be coming in with seminars, with some uh, presentation, a relevant presentation for you. So uh, for now, we can stop here. I will try to make the assignment in such way next Friday it can uh, be a start of presentation of some groups on, on bacteriology, systematic bacteriology, but on Monday it will be introduction to virology or viruses. That question. Yes. Uh, we don't have no. If I don't possible, If possible, you should provide no. Hello? I, I mean, if possible, you should provide note. Which note? Uh, like, not, not we are, we, we've used this, we've used today and then last time. Do you mean these slides? Yes. Yeah, you will share the slides. Eh? They are for you. They are not mine. Eh? They are prepared for you. Thank you. Mm. So uh, you will have this slide, and uh, I expect you to do the slide on what I will send you as a, as a, as the assignment. CP uh, Gako, you will organize the five group in the. Ensure everyone have each group have its topic. Then uh, who ye, as you are in in three uh, three uh, fields uh, medicine, uh, dental, and uh, pharmacy, you also have to organize the three the twelve group. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, by 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 field, eh? you can combine. Eh? I think you are together. You can manage. Excuse me, lecture. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, usually medicine, general medicine and dental surgery in the whole year, we have a sexy group. But because of, uh, we are going also to cooperative pharmacy, maybe you can give us time to arrange the groups. So that you know the kind of group that we can form. Do you, do you mean I give the list, or you already have this list and you can make the CP, we, CP that we, we made uh, last last uh, face to face? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Do you suggest that I I do group by myself, or CP can do this? No, for us, CPs, we can meet and arrange the group because we have a cross list. And that is the best way, eh? because you will know this belongs to this group, this belongs to this group. And um, once I, I, I provide topic, I will provide five topics to GAPO team and 12 topics to the team. Yeah, no and problem. You, you give me the list of uh, individual participating in each group in such way they can uh, have questions and they can express themselves during the presentation. Eh? I expect everyone to participate equally. Yes. Mm. But the possibility to get all the notes that we will be using in this module so that maybe someone can read before the lecturing. It can be helpful. No, I don't follow. What do you mean? I mean, it's a suggestion that maybe we can get all notes 
that will be using in this module so that if someone is able to read before lecturing, we can do NT really helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Good. So whenever possible, it will be shared. But if not shared beforehand, we can still share and don't hesitate to ask questions. Huh? When we have a next lecturer, when you read your slides, you can uh, note your question and ask uh, during the other lecturer. Yeah. Mm. Harundo Fitikiwazo, now it was Hagarikira Hongaho, Kazako Meza Wambere, with the uh, introduction to viruses. Nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. Yola, yola. Thank you, bro.